Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at everything that you need to know on states of matter and mixtures. Okay, if we start off with the particle models then. What you need to be able to do is make sure you can draw and describe the properties of solids, liquids and gases. So if we start off with a solid, remember it should look like this. All the particles should be in a regular pattern, so in rows they should be touching. And if you're asked how they move, they don't move, they vibrate about a fixed position. If we move on to the liquid, remember the liquid takes the shape of the container. It's a random arrangement of particles because they can move past each other. The particles should still be touching and they should flow. And then if we move on to gases, the gases are far apart so they're not touching. They're moving in random directions. You show that with either arrows or these direction lines that I've drawn and they will always spread out to fill the container. You also need to know what all the state changes are and the names for them. So if you take a solid and you turn it into a liquid, it is melting. If you take a liquid, turn it into a gas, it's evaporating. A gas back down to a liquid is condensing and a liquid down to a solid is freezing. So you should remember those four. But what you may not remember is a solid going all the way up to a gas and that is sublimation and vice versa, a gas going down to a solid is called deposition. So again, learn those words if you can't remember them. Now, in all likelihood, the questions you guys are gonna to get to do with state changes and to do with the particle model is all gonna to be to do with state change graphs. So I've got one here on the left-hand side, and what you'd be asked to do is tell me what's happening at any of these points and explain the properties. So if we start off with A, the beginning, it's your solid. The particles are touching, it's a regular arrangement, you've got your particle model looking similar to this. At B, that's where melting's occurring. So you'll notice here that the temperature has not increased, it's stayed the same. The reason for that is the energy is not being used to increase the temperature, it's being used to weaken the intermolecular forces, the forces between the molecules. At section C, it's now a liquid, so the particles are still touching, they're flowing past each other, and it's taking the shape of the container. At D, it's evaporating, so very similar to stage B, the temperature stays the same, it doesn't increase. The reason, energy is being used this time to completely break your intermolecular forces. And then at stage E, it's your gas, therefore they're far apart, it's a random movement, and you've got your arrow lines on them. The next part of this video is going to have a look at what purity means and the difference between pure and a mixture. So nice and simply, if something's pure, it's all the same substance. There's only one type of thing in there. You can have a pure element and you can have a pure compound. So an element means it's only got one element in there. For example, gold or argon. It's just one of them, nothing else. If it's a compound, you're going to have different atoms in there, but they're all bonded the same way. So you can see here, I've got two water molecules, two H2Os. They're both the same, which makes it pure. The second you put something else in there that's not bonded together, so more than one type, it's a mixture because they can be separated out nice and easily. Now on your state change graphs, you will know if something's pure or not because it will only have one melting point. It will be flat. If you have a diagonal melting point, like you can see here, so it's not flat, it means you've got a range of melting points. That tells you it's a mixture. Okay, the next section of this video is how do you know what state any substance is when you're given the melting points and the boiling points. So here I've got a sentence that says a substance has a melting point of 27 degrees C and a boiling point of 92 degrees C. What state is it at room temperature? So what I always do is I draw out this diagram here, solid, liquid, and then gas on the right hand side. And I put some lines in between the three states. The line on the left, that is your melting point, 27 degrees. The line on the right, that is your boiling point, 92 degrees. The question says, what state is it at room temperature? Now, room temperature is usually around 21. So 21 on here is below my 27 degrees. Therefore, it's going to be a solid. If I look at another example, I have a melting point of minus 200 and a boiling point of 40. You can see that 21 is going to be in between minus 240. If it's in the in-between bit, it's a liquid. And then finally, if it melted at minus 200 and boiled at 10, 21 is above 10, therefore it's going to be a gas. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. 
You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.